Hello, my name is Jessica Dean, and I am a cloud developer advocate here at Microsoft. I focus heavily on DevOps from the ops perspective. And even more shocking, I have a deep passion for Linux and open source. Today, I'm going to show you how you can do Node.js development in Azure with Visual Studio Team Services in conjunction with Linux and open source tools. Now, with my background of Linux system administration and deep engagement in local open source communities, I had to go learn VSTS. What I was surprised to discover is how easy it is to configure your build and release stages for your Node.js web application in your CI CD pipeline using VSTS. For today's demo, we are going to use a Node.js web application and deploy it to a Linux web app service on Azure. We are also going to do this from my Mac. Let's go check it out. So I have already pre-created a project for this demo. You'll see right here, I have my Node.js app service Linux project selected within my Visual Studio collection. It's the project we're on, and we're currently under the Build and Releases tab where we're gonna look at our builds. We're specifically looking at build definitions I have pre-created. So let's take a look and see how I set this up. First, under Tasks, you'll see that there's three parts to this. The first part is Process. This is where we actually define what's going to set up for our build process. This is the foundation. So first, we have the name. Next, under Agent Queue, you'll notice that we have selected a hosted Linux preview agent. This is one that Microsoft has set up for us to use in preparation for our Node.js build. It's a Linux computer. You can also choose other hosted agents, and you could also choose hosted Windows agent. If you have your own private agents that you would like to select, you could always do that as well. For this demo, we are going to go with the hosted Linux preview. Next, we're gonna tell our build definition where to get our sources files. I have already pre-imported from my GitHub into VSTS and set up a Git repository. So I have that repository selected, and I'm going to use the master branch. Next, we're going on to where we're actually going to define the tasks we wanna use for this build. Now, if I wanted to add a new task under phase, I would hit, simply hit the plus button here to add a task to this phase. I have already added all necessary tasks for our Node.js build project. Let's check it out. The first task is I'm actually running an NPM command where I'm gonna install Bower. So you'll see here the name of that task is npm install bower. The command for npm I'm running is install, and the arguments I'm specifying is bower and allow root. Next, from command line or shell, I'm going to reference bower and tell it to install and allow root to run bower. Next, I'm going to do an npm install for test, and I'm actually going to also do npm test. Finally, I'm gonna publish the test results from that. And the test re results files I'm referencing is my XML file and it's in a JUnit format. Next, I'm going to publish the code coverage results. The tool I'm gonna to use is Cobertura. And I'm specifying my coverage XML file here. Finally, I'm actually gonna run npm install on my Node.js working folder in the source directory. So if we hit the ellipses over here under working folder and see what we're gonna run npm against, we can see my repository in VSTS. If I drop this up one, we can see top three folders as well as my Bower file, my package.json, et cetera. But I wanna run npm install specifically on the source file where I have my web config, my server JS, my package JSON, and even a Docker file and app JS. So I'm gonna cancel that and we see the command I'm running on that is install. Next, I'm gonna build an image. So you already saw where my Docker file is, but I've defined that my Azure container registry, or I've defined that I'm going to use a container registry. 
And I've also have selected here my Docker registry, which I've pre-added in in services. If I wanted to add a new one, I could hit new. If we want to take a look and see what services I've added in for this project, let's go ahead and open manage in a new tab here. So we see for this project, I've only defined two services. To add a new service, I would simply go up here to new service endpoint, and I could choose to add a new Azure Resource Manager service, Docker host, or even fun open source things like Jenkins and Kubernetes, et cetera. But for this project, all we need is a Docker registry and to add our Azure subscription. So I have already done that. We can see the Docker registry here. If I hit update, it'll show me my registry is my Azure container registry. I have already added in my Docker ID and my password for that registry. Also, we can see that I've already added in my Azure subscription. So if I hit update service configuration, I can see the subscription I've selected. Great. So going back over to our build definition, we see that I'm referencing that registry connection. The next step for Docker is I'm telling it to build an image. I'm telling it where that Docker file is. Again, remember it was under source, there's Docker file. So that's the Docker file. Next, I'm telling it the build context is that source directory. And the image name I'm using is my Azure Container Registry, the name of the project, and the build ID. I could also choose to add additional image tags here if I, here if I want. And I could also check this box to include the latest tag if I needed. The push an image stage is very similar to build. All we're doing is pushing an image. So again, we name the task. We choose the registry connection. And then we choose the action. We're going to push an image. We specify the same image name we used in our build. And here we could also tell it if we wanted to push multiple images. So we could push our build ID and the latest tag at the same time. Next, we're going to copy our ARM template files. These are the files that's going to handle our deployment into Azure. Those files are actually located already in my repository in VSTS under templates. So I want to copy the entire templates directory. So you'll see that I'm copying the source folder is templates. I'm copying all the contents of that directory that end in JSON. And I'm targeting the staging directory in pub and templates. Finally, I'm going to publish the artifacts from that copy, where I'm going to publish the templates into an artifact name of drop. And I will pull that in my release stage. So let's go ahead and run this build. Great. So we see that this is building. So we see that it's starting the build. It's preparing the build directory. It's getting our sources. And now it's running npm install bower to set up and install bower. It's now running bower. It's testing npm. It's running the NPM test. It's publishing our test results, publishing our code coverage results. And now we're moving on to our NPM install for our Node.js application. It's building an image. It's now pushing that image to our Azure Container Registry. It now copied the templates, and it pushed those templates to the release stage. So if we go over to our releases, which I already have. We're going to go ahead and refresh that. We should see release number two that is starting. While it's executing, let's take a look at the steps. So first, I see in my pipeline that I'm telling this particular pipeline to pull artifacts that we published from our continuous integration build. So we can see that I have the project selected and the sources from that build definition and to grab the latest version. I also have a continuous deployment trigger set up on it to immediately fire off into the dev environment. If I wanted to add another artifact, I could simply hit add and choose the source for that build. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first environment we've created, which is dev. And so first off, we see that I've named the deployment process dev. Next, we see that I'm actually running this on a hosted Visual Studio 2017 Windows system. And then I only have one task because all I need to do is do an Azure Resource Group deployment using the Docker image from the build definition. So we'll see that I have named the task. I've specified my connection as Azure Resource Manager. I've also specified the subscription I want to use as my subscription. And I'm telling it I want it to create or update a resource group. I'm using an environment variable, which I will show you how to configure in just a second. And I'm telling it the location I want to create the resource group in. Next, I'm telling it the template file to use for the deployment. 
and the parameters file. Again, that was as part of the copy from the build definition. I'm overriding any template parameters, and I'm referencing, again, environment variables that I've defined. So I'm specifying the image tag that we're going to use for this app service deployment, the image port, the hosting plan name, the website name, the location, and then all my registry information for my private Azure Container Registry. So let's take a look at those variables. You'll see here that I have the location, the container registry, password and username, as well as the hosting plan name, the image port, the resource group name. And I actually have multiple entries in here because I do have multiple environments. I have dev, QA, and prod, and the same environment variable set up for dev, QA, and prod under the website name. I also have the website URL. So let's go take a look at the release that has already fired off. And I can see that that's actually already completed. Before we go take a look at our website, let's take a look at that particular release. So we also see that because I have set up a pipeline where we have dev, QA, and prod, it successfully deployed to dev. So I could hit this button to approve it and send it to QA. We don't have to do that right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the logs. So we'll see those stages. We saw that it ran on the agent, it initialized the job, and it initialized our, our agent. It downloaded the artifacts. Here's where it downloaded our Node.js application and downloaded our JSON files that we will need for our deployment. And then on the actual deployment stage, here's where it ran our actual deployment into Azure. So if we go over to our Azure subscription and hit refresh, we should see our Node.js app service application, which we do with the dev tag at the end there. And I actually see the app service right here, as well as the app service plan and the insights. Let's take a look at our app service. And I can actually see the URL right here. So if I copy it, paste that over into a new tab. So there you go, Node.js development in Azure using Visual Studio Team Services. We were able to seamlessly tie in Linux with our build agent, open source tools such as Bower and Node.js during our build, and then we even used a hosted Visual Studio 2017 agent queue for our release into Azure on a Linux web app service. This really shows how VSTS can completely handle your Node.js development in Azure with standard DevOps practices and What's even more cool is how you can do it from any platform. With my deep passion for the Linux and open source community, I can't tell you how excited I am to see open source tools like Node.js, Linux, and Bower treated as first-class citizens within the Microsoft ecosystem. Thank you very much.